We're going to go into step three. Hey! Now, notice that when I landed in that cross stance, I landed double block, knees are bent rather than back being bent. A lot of times I see the back goes down. This is a very vulnerable position in karate. Hello everyone, Sensei Sarah, one of the Shotokan instructors here at Global Martial Arts University. Uh, today I'm gonna to be working on Heian Godan, specifically the Heian Godan jump. So if you're not familiar with Heian Godan, Heian Godan is the purple belt kata here at Global Martial Arts University. And it does have a quite challenging jump in it. But I believe if you will practice it in steps uh, that I'm gonna show you the breakdown of, you can get this jump. So for those of you who are not familiar, or for those of you who are, just a review, at one aspect of the Heian Godan, we come in a cross stance, Agezuke, and from there, hey! we go into a tuck jump and land knees bent with a double block down. All right, so in order to accomplish this jump, I have broken it into three different parts to help you along your way. But first, I want to tell you a secret. This jump is not really as high as it looks. What makes the jump look high is getting the legs tucked properly. So if I put energy into just jumping with my legs straight out, it's not that high of a jump. Uh, so if I do the same amount of energy and tuck my legs, it looks like a much higher jump. So the other thing is that when we land this jump, we want to land it and not fall into it. So I believe by gaining control through these drills, you can accomplish that. So let's get started with step number one in the drill. So this is a three part drill. Part number one involves getting the right knee from this direction to this direction. So 90 degree movement. And what we're going to work on is tucking that knee up into the stomach. If you'll also notice my toes are pulled up there rather than hanging down. That'll also make your jump look higher. If your foot's hanging down, it makes your jump look lower. So step number one, I don't worry about my hands. Nice kokutsu dachi. And you can also do it from renoja dachi because actually that's the stance we're doing it from. So either way, just to strengthen your legs. Step number one, just work on tucking that right knee into the stomach. So the second step is going to be bringing the left leg behind the right leg. Uh, before I go to that though, I would like to point out sometimes people almost use like a, a, the beginning of a mawashi movement. So they kind of spin, but your center of gravity is not right. If you do that, you want to come from here to here because that way your body can be upright as you go into this jump. If you do the spinning motion, you're off kilter and it's really hard to get that left leg tucked under properly. So step number two, you're going to tuck the left leg behind the right leg. Now notice when I practice landing, I'm not landing in the exact stance yet, but what I am working on with that landing is making sure that it's controlled. So I'm not just dropping my legs, I'm actually pushing my legs. So when I do this jump, I have total control of my landing. That's what we want to accomplish. It's a little bit more difficult in the cross stance, but if you just keep working on it and build your muscle memory, you can get it. So we had step one, right leg forward. Step two, tuck the left leg behind. Final step is going to be the hands. Now I do want to point out that the kia in this kata should actually happen in the air. Sometimes it's a little bit off, but that is ideal. That's where you want it to happen. So you have to have a little bit of a jump in order to give yourself time to do the kia. So from here, we're gonna go into step three. Hey! Now, notice that when I landed in that cross stance, I landed double block, knees are bent rather than back being bent. A lot of times I see the back goes down. This is a very vulnerable position in karate you wouldn't want to put your head down like that. So it's a knee bent. Now this can be a little bit hard on your knees. Make sure that wing, that's why you want a controlled landing. So you want, you don't want to just fall onto your knees because that puts a lot of undue stress and pressure on them. 
So I'm going to go through the three steps again, show you one total hand go down jump, and then of course you're always free to message me if you have any further questions. Step one. Step two. And then finally, step three. Hey! Okay. So again, all in one, hand go down jump. Hey! Landed with my knees bent, nice, strong arms. And that's how you break down and work on your hand go down jump. Now, it will take practice and it will take some time and patience sometimes, but just keep working on it and you'll have a nice, strong, athletic hand go down jump. Let's 